Are you glad to be in God's house? Amen. All right. It is a good thing when God's people come together. Everything in life has a time, has a place, it has a purpose, has a season, and it has a reason. Now, some of the things that we go through in this life, those things are tough. But some of the things that we go through in life, those things are sweet as well. But in everything that we encounter, there is a reason for every event that comes and every event that goes. Now, sometimes we can't understand the reason for that particular event, but in time... Reason is always revealed. Amen? Amen. God knows what He's doing. God knows what He has purpose. God knows where He's sending. and God knows what He's bringing. Amen? Amen. Do you believe that? Do you trust that? He's proven it time and time again. Through countless centuries of how He has dealt with man. And this portion of Scripture that we're going to look at this morning has everything to do with the will of God. God's will and what God has purposed and what God is doing and what God is going to do in every individual's life and every part of the body of Christ. God has a reason and God has a purpose. Looking in 1 Kings, the 17th chapter, we're going to read these first nine verses And it's a very familiar passage of Scripture to you because it has everything to do with Elijah. And this is the first appearance that we see in Scripture of Elijah found in verse 1. And he says, And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Get away from here, and turn eastward, and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and stayed by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning. And bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up. Because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. The word, the name Elijah means the Lord is God. There is no mistake why he would be named Elijah. Because everyone whom he prophesied to would be hearing the truth and they would be hearing the truth from the Lord. Because that is what he was to speak. We see this is the first time in Scripture where his name appears. And the first event that we see him involved in is confronting King Ahab about a colossal event that is about to take place. But there is a reason why God has brought this prophetic proclamation to this king. Because he was wicked and because he was evil and because he was misleading the people of God. Therefore, God had to send his man... The Lord is God had to come and speak to Ahab straight forward. And he had to let Ahab know what's coming. What is ahead. There's a colossal event. And trust me Ahab, it's not going to rain here until I say that it's going to rain here. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter all the prophets of Baal that you have assembled. There is nothing that they can't do against what the Lord God has commanded. 
God has a will. God has a plan. And God has a purpose. And sometimes it takes times of drought in order for that purpose to be understood. And in order for God's will to prevail. Amen? Sometimes God's got to shake us and God has got to get our attention. In the book of 1 Corinthians 14, 31, it says, For you can all prophesy one by one, that all may learn and be encouraged as God's man. As God's man. You can be used to speak God's will. You can be used to speak for Him. Do you realize that you can be the Elijah in someone's life? Absolutely. You've been given that power by the power of the Holy Spirit. We were talking about that in Sunday school this morning. About understanding and knowing how to use the spiritual weapons that God has given us. And it's not just to defend ourselves. But it's to go out and to proclaim, to be offensive, to go against the enemy. To go against the enemy and overtake that which he thinks that he has authority over. We've got to be those kind of people. This is what Elijah's doing. He's going before this mighty king. And he's saying there's one greater than you. There's one who has a greater purpose. There's one who has a greater will. And putting himself in jeopardy. This is what Elijah did. He put himself in jeopardy before this king. To prophesy this which the Lord desired to speak. Why did God want this spoken? Because he wanted King Ahab to turn. And he wanted Ahab to be an influence and have an impact on the people of Israel and turn them back to the Lord God because he had misled them. You know, we've been very misled. It's the most favorite word in our American politics. I misspoke or I misled. You know, that's something that you use all the time. This king had misled these people. And God's man came in and he said, listen, here's what God has to say. I want you to know this because I have heard the Father's voice. I have heard the word from the Lord Almighty. It is so important for God's man to recognize his Father's voice. Because if he isn't familiar with his Father's voice, he himself can be led astray by his own ideas and by his own desires. You know, we see here in this verse of Scripture that... uh, Elijah, when this whole moment was over with, God came to him and spoke to him again. Now, when the moment was over with, he could have ignored God. We, we're going to look that night in Bible study about how Jonah ignored God, didn't he? And he went his own way. Didn't work out for him, did it? That's exactly right. But we know Elijah is following God's voice because it's written here that the Lord came to him saying... God spoke to him. I have a direction. I have a path. There's somewhere else that I have for you. So he recognized the Father's voice. So he didn't follow his own ideas. He didn't follow his own desires. He followed the will of God. Our human characteristics can be deceiving to us. And it can bring harm into our lives if we follow that. Jesus Christ said in John 10 and verse 27, He said, my, sheer, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Wow, think about that intimacy. That kind of relationship that Elijah had with God. Think about the relationship that you and I can have with Almighty God through Jesus Christ. Christ said it right here. My sheep hear my voice. He says on back in, 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 in words, in verses uh, 4 and 5, that they won't follow anybody else. They know me. They hear my voice. They know my voice. And they're not going to follow anybody else. I paraphrase that. Knowing and understanding the command of the shepherd, it takes intimacy. It takes familiarity. Knowing. Knowing because you've walked with Him. He's carried you many different paths in many different ways. And so you're familiar. You know His heart because He keeps you right here. And so your heart beats for Him. 
And your desire is to hear His voice and to know where He's leading and to know where He's direct, directing you. You know, it takes following God's directives to build bonds of trust and dependencies between us and our shepherd. It, on, it not only does that, but it brings about good health. What do we see going on with Elijah here? God directs him to Cherith, to the brook. He takes him there because he wants him to sit back for just a moment. And he wants to nourish him. He wants him to regain strength because there's something else that God has for Elijah to do. So God sends him over here. And he wants to nourish him. But that only comes from following God's will. We know that if we do not follow God's will, things are going to dry up. Things are going to dry up. We're going to become malnourished. We're going to become weak. And then we become vulnerable. God doesn't want us there. He wants us in places of nourishment. But in order to follow that, in order to do that, we've got to go the way that He's directing. Not follow our own ideas. Not follow our own desires. But to follow after Him. Now to do that, it takes relationship. Psalms 23 verses 1 through 3. God says this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Notice who this is all about. It's all about God. It's all about His will. It's all about what He wants to do toward the servant who is willing to follow Him. He's my shepherd. Therefore, I'm not going to want for anything because He's going to take me to these places and He's going to provide all these things. Look what He promised to Elijah. You go by the brook. Sit there. Stay there. There's cool. There's fresh water. Cool and fresh water. And, 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 and I'm going to use something, and we're going to look at that in just a minute. I'm going to use something that's going to be unbelievable to you. I'm going to feed you. I'm going to feed you bread, and I'm going to feed you meat. Notice, Elijah really didn't even have to do anything for himself because the Lord was providing. That is one of the names of the Lord. He is our provider. The Lord is our provider. God's not going to lead us down some path of destruction. He leads us in paths of righteousness for His glory, for His honor, for His praise. And we will be glorified on this path as we go with Him down this glorified path. But we've got to follow the path that He leads us down in order to be glorified. If not then we're stubborn and we're rebellious. And we can't expect to receive anything from Him if we resist it. Now, some of the circumstances that God will use during our times of refreshings, they seem a little bit strange. It's going to seem strange to us. It may appear, may appear to us and make us uncomfortable. It may appear, maybe that's a little unorthodox to us. But just look at what God used to feed Elijah with. He used a raven, a carnivore. He used a nasty bird. He used a stingy fowl. Let me tell you something about ravens. Ravens are not friendly birds. And can you imagine for this stingy, nasty? And think about Elijah having to take this stuff from this filthy bird. Thinking about all that and how it could, you know, defile his origin and where, you know, his beliefs and things. God's going to use this in order to accomplish his plan. Imagine what Elijah's thinking. Lord, this is, uh, this, this is quite unorthodox. Uh, Lord, this is quite unusual. Lord, this is very unfamiliar. I don't know if. He didn't do that. He didn't question God in this. He trusted God in this. He trusted God 
in the ways that God wanted to prevail in his life. He trusted God's purpose in the whole situation. That God was going to provide something for him to drink. God was going to provide something for him to eat. Now understand this. Elijah had to live with the prophecies that came from his mouth. He had to live with the prophecies that came from his mouth. And looking at everything that God had done, Elijah had to realize, just as was spoken in 1 Corinthians 1.27, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. God's supernatural provisions for us will be there for us if we choose to obey Him and trust Him with our lives. Elijah went to where God told him to go, and God provided as He promised. There's somewhere God has for you to go. There is something that God has purposed and planned for you to do. Let me ask you something. Are you following that purpose and that plan? Or are you resisting that purpose and that plan? Do you know that it's God leading you there? Do you know that it has, He has purposed that for you to accomplish and to carry out what He has purposed you for in this life? Sometimes it's hard to see because we're not looking with eyes of expectation. Sometimes it's hard to know because we're not searching with minds that want to do His will. Sometimes it's hard to believe because we don't truly just trust Him with everything. And here's what He's saying. Here's what He's saying. Trust me, Elijah. I've got you. No matter how good things may seem to be going for us at times. Things was going pretty good for Elijah. He'd already gone and done what God had told him to do. God says, go over here, man. I've got a feast for you. i got plenty to drink. You're going to be in good health. I'm going to take care of you. But see, Elijah had prophesied something to King Ahab. And what was that promise? No rain. No rain. So Elijah had to live and embrace and understand that the words he had prophesied to Ahab came true for him. As well, God is going to fulfill His promises. And so the brook dried up because there was no rain. And God had a purpose for that. God knew that that was what it was going to take for Elijah to understand. It's time for me to get up from where I am, even though it is so good, even though it's so wonderful. It's time for me to get up because if I don't, This brook's going to dry up. If I don't get up and go with God, then my life is going to dry up. And the next thing you know, I'm going to be a pile of bones leaned up next to this tree and somebody's going to come by and say, well, I wonder what happened to him. I like that uh, movie Dances with Wolves. You ever seen that? And, And they got this crazy old guy that's on there and there's a skeleton on the ground. It's got an arrow sticking through him. And he just says this funny line. He said, and somebody somewhere saying, I don't know why he don't write. We can dry up. We can stay where we're at. But you know what? It doesn't say it here. But I guarantee you, the raven quit coming too. The raven quit coming. But that didn't stop God's promise. It didn't stop God's purpose for Elijah. Because God told him as soon as the brook dried up. He says go over here to a place I've prepared for you. And there's going to be a widow there. And she's going to provide for you. You know the story of the widow and her son. She had just enough meal. She had enough, just enough oil to make a last meal for her son and herself. And then they were going to die. They were just going to die there. That was the end of it. She had no hope. But here came hope. Here came hope through the man of God. 
the Lord is God, Elijah, who come to bring them life. Life. Sometimes we don't understand why God's doing what He's doing. We don't know why He's leading us where He wants us to go. But it's going to be revealed. And He does it to bring us life. We think we're dying. We think we're going to perish. But God says, I want to give you life. Do you trust me to provide for you? Because if you do, I will provide for you. No matter how good it may be going for us at times, God will dry up the provisional stream to cause us to adjust our lives to where He's going to use us. You can't stay where you are and go with God. Do you know why so many people of the children of Israel perished in the wilderness? Because of their continual discontent. Because of their continual disobedience to follow the Lord's leadership. Before, because of their continual disobedience to trust God. And to trust God's man to lead them. They wouldn't do it. And so many perished. God showed them, I have a promised land. Send these spies. Let them come back. Let them tell you. Only a few said, hey, listen. It's a place flowing with milk and honey. And the rest of them says, this is a bunch of giants in there. We can't go. So what are you going to do? Are you going to believe, God, that I have provisions? I have things for you that you do not know. I have things for you that you can't see. But you can see and you can know if you trust me to provide for you. They're there. They're there. You just got to adjust your mind, your attitude, your spirit, and your heart toward God's directives. In Acts, the 26th chapter, verse 16. But rise, he says, and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both of the things which you have seen, and of the things which I will yet reveal to you in order to receive God's provisions. We must move from where we are and go to where He has purposed for us to be. We may not see at the moment what He has provided, but He will reveal it when we arrive to where He has prepared it. Mm. Mm. Now when we arrive to the place where He has prepared for us, it will be obvious that God has brought us there for the purpose of healing others' lives. Do we see this going on in the life of Elijah? Yes. If he hadn't obeyed God's directives, do you think this woman and her son would have perished? Yes. Because God's man didn't follow God. That would be the only reason they would perish. But He did. He did. And He brought hope. And He brought promise into their lives. Look, it's not so much about us. Following God's directive and following God's purpose isn't so much about us, folks. We see here with Elijah... It was about someone else. So we can't think with thoughts of selfishness when it comes to following God's will and being obedient to Him. We hear His voice. He is our Father. We trust Him. I can remember so many times with my dad. I can remember going out in the woods and hunting. And if I went up there now, the stream wouldn't be probably any wider than one of those steps right there but when i was about four or five and i was with my daddy that was a gulf it was a chasm and daddy you know he just kind of just steps over it this that and the other and i'm standing on the other side he says come on son i said daddy i i, I can't make it here's what he did he stuck out his hand he said come here son trust me 
I got you. I got you. Leap. Take a running start, son, and give it all you got. I've got you. But trust me, I'll provide. I'll provide the way across. God made provisions for Elijah. Elijah, Elijah had to jump across. He had to obey God. Why? For the life of someone else. You're still there in 1 Kings 17. Let's look at verses 17 through 24. Now it happened after these things that the son of the woman who owned the house became sick. And his sickness was so serious that there was no breath left in him. So she said to Elijah, What have I to do with you, O man of God? Have you come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to kill my son? And he said to her, Give me your son. So he took him out of his, her arms and carried him to the upper room where he was staying and laid him on his own bed. Then he cried out to the Lord and said, O Lord my God, have you also brought tragedy on the widow with whom I lodge by killing her son? And he stretched himself out on the child three times and cried out unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray, let this child so come back to him. Then the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came back to him, and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper room into the house and gave him to his mother. And Elijah said, See, your son lives. Then the woman said to Elijah, Now, by this, I know that you are a man of God and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is truth. When God sends a message through His man and when God proves Himself by bringing life, you know it's truth. Sometimes it's hard to trust. Was it hard for this widow to trust? Yes. Was it even hard for Elijah to trust? Yes. Because Elijah knew all along that his mission was to go there. God said he would provide. And yet this tragedy happens. It seems so hard. What's your will in all of this? His will is this. That he is glorified so that we may live. Elijah had to be obedient. Elijah trusted God. And so he cried out to God. And God provided life. Life to all that was in the house. Note this last verse, verse 24. It says everything that we need to remember. And when it says this, when the man of God goes where God is prepared for him to go and does what God has appointed for him to do. Everyone else will reap the benefit that God has provided. Sometimes it takes the brook running dry. Verse 24 says, Then the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is the truth. Let's pray. Mighty God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this hour. We 